Welcome to our Project Zomboid Beginner Guide. So the aim of this video is to bring you through your first game and give you a whole bunch of tips and tricks. Uh, so, if you've uh, figured out about Project Zomboid, maybe this is going to be your first time playing it, or you could have even been playing it for a while and you're looking for... How could you live for longer than two days? Because uh, that was our problem when we first started playing. It was, uh, we would always die on the second day. We'd be able to make it past the first day, but the uh, second day is so difficult. Uh, so, we're going to help you uh, try to get through that. We can uh, usually live like uh, 10 days, but there's going to be like uh, some hidden mechanic that's going to uh, ruin your game no matter what before you even begin, right? Which is the power and water will shut off uh, randomly in your game before it begins. <laughs> so before we even get into the game, before we even look at the uh, traits or anything, before your game has even begun, your game uh, could already be ruined, right? So the power and the water can each uh, turn off separately between 0 to 30 days. And if uh, either of those numbers rolls a 0, you won't have power or water on day 1. Like, uh, recently, I made a game, and on day two, I noticed that the uh, water wasn't working, so it rolled a zero or a one out of 30 on the water shutoff, ruining my game. So you want those uh, random numbers to both roll at least uh, plus 14. There's no way to know if those numbers, what they actually rolled until they actually shut off, right? So you won't even know if your game is ruined until that actually happens. So before your game even begins, keep that in mind that the game may already be trying to kill you before the game has even begun by planning to shut off your power or water within the first few days. Or both of them if both numbers rolled like a 3 or lower. So if you survive to this game for 14 plus days and you have uh, both power and water, be thankful because uh, both numbers rolled a 14 plus and they uh, could be up to uh, 30 days you could have a really good game going, right? <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to uh, load. We're just going to load this game here, right? So we had a really good day one. And then we're playing day two. And then uh, we noticed that the uh, water stopped working. So we're just going to show you that this is a reality. Before you even get into the game, the game is already trying to kill you. And it's a difficult game ready. You're going to uh, die enough as it is. So you might not even uh, notice it, right? <laughs> So this is uh, day two. So day one is seven zero nine. We have the uh, digital watch, so we can see what day it is. So day two, went here to go uh, fill up our water bottles, and uh, this thing stopped working. Right, the sink doesn't work. Nothing works down here. We go to the other one up here, and if we uh, right click, <laughs> if you ever uh, notice this, if you're playing your game, maybe you made it through the first day or the second day. Or maybe it's even the third day or the fourth day. You're going to fill up water or a drink or something. And the water says like uh, 11 out of 20. And then if we actually go here and uh, start using it, right? We have all these uh, water containers because that's usually our strategy. Usually for the uh, first week, we'll go through, try to get a bunch of uh, water containers, try to fill them up because we know that the uh, water is going to eventually turn off. But... If the game's feeling really evil and it wants to turn off the water on day one, oh, you won't be able to uh, do that. So that's going to completely ruin the game. I wonder if we even have a uh, power, right? The game could have been uh, really evil and <laughs> uh, turn off our power as well on the first game. So no matter how good you do, we did uh, really good. We got a bunch of uh, water packs. We got the hiking bag. So we found a really good bag on day one. We have uh, two really good weapons, so everything went uh, perfect for day one. However, when we woke up and then went to go uh, fill out these water containers, the water was turned off. So uh, no matter how good you do, the RNG between uh, 0 to 30 could just uh, completely ruin your game, right? So before you even begin, I thought I would let you know that, right? So just be prepared. You're like, uh, wow, we're doing amazing on day one. Everything went so perfectly. And then your water power shuts off on day two, then you're just going to have to uh, completely restart the game. <clears throat> so now that we have that, 
I recommend you go through the tutorial. Go through the tutorial. It takes like uh, 10 to 15 minutes. It'll teach you the basics of the game. And it'll teach you that you're meant to die at the end. There's no way to avoid dying in this game. <clears throat> so maybe you've gone through the tutorial. Maybe you've tried some solo games. Maybe you've played the game for a long time. I think we're almost at like uh, 200 hours, 300 hours. How long have we been uh, playing? I think it was like two, 235 hours. Oh my God. <sighs> Let's just, uh, yeah, there it is right there. Playtime, 235 hours. And I think we just bought this game like two weeks ago. We got it during the Steam Summer Sale. It's like the games are all 50% off. We bought a whole bunch of games. We played Stellaris for a little bit. And then Project Zomboid, it was on the uh, front page. It was like the uh, featured game, even though it's a 10 year old game. And then we just played and played it constantly. Some nights we even stay up for like uh, 24 hours and then realize that it's been 24 hours and then we uh, go to bed. We're like, geez, not another 24 hour day of Project Zomboid. So, uh, let's uh, get rid of this uh, display capture here. We just have the game that we're looking at. I think we could delete that. Well, I guess we might be using it for something. Uh, so let's close this and then go into the game. Uh, so we could say we do have a lot of experience in this game. Even though we just got it uh, two weeks ago, I think we learned a lot in like uh, 235 hours of playing the game over two weeks. So what you're going to do after the tutorial, go to solo. <laughs> and then you're going to be presented with this uh, new game window. So the default game mode is Apocalypse. That's actually the one that I like playing. It's uh, the more difficult game mode that makes it more challenging. Loot's gonna be harder to find. Zombies are gonna be stronger and your weapons are gonna be weaker and you're going to die faster, right? <clears throat> so your character is gonna be just a complete wimp. But in uh, Survivor, so we tried Survivor. I think this is more like the uh, an arcade style game you just go around you just beat up zombies and then zombies are a lot easier right Cause, uh, compared to apocalypse zombies are gonna be a lot weaker your weapons are gonna be a lot stronger you're gonna have a lot more health and uh loot is gonna be a lot more common so you're gonna be able to find a lot more guns and ammunition and all the uh, good stuff around the map everywhere but we do like the uh, challenge, right? Apocalypse is the default game mode. That's the one that they start you on, and we've been uh, playing it, and we do like it because it's extremely challenging and it's extremely rewarding when you actually accomplish something. You're like, wow, this game is amazingly difficult, but we actually survived for two weeks. <clears throat> Makes you feel super accomplished. Whereas a uh, survivor, it's like we survived for two weeks. Well, of course you did. It's just like an arcade game where you just go around and beat up zombies. Apocalypse, more like a survival game where uh, you're gonna get killed in every corner, makes it intense. So you can choose any of these things, right? You could be Apocalypse, the default game mode, the more challenging one, the Survivor. If you want a easier time, you just want to kill zombies, don't worry about anything. If there's like a builder, we never did this one. Custom sandbox, we didn't mess with that yet. There's some uh, challenges you can do. We haven't done any of these yet. We haven't even uh, beaten Apocalypse yet. We haven't even beaten Apocalypse yet, so we're not ready to go out of the challenges yet. So, uh, this uh, game guide is going to be for the Apocalypse game mode. We're just going to go with that. It's uh, the difficult, stealth focus, short lifespan, combat is best avoided. Although, oh, we do combat all the time. We kill zombies all day. <clears throat> So the next screen after you chose your game mode would be the spotting location. So there's uh, four different spotting locations you can choose and uh, between each location, I think there's like uh, 10 different spot locations. At least in this uh, first one, the only uh, spot location we ever played in was uh, Meldrock. So we spent like uh, 235 hours in Meldrock. So I think we have a, a pretty good pretty good experience with this map now do keep in mind that uh, all of these maps they are connected so you can start here and then you could eventually drive up to these areas if you want so they are all on the same map they're just uh, really far away from each other <laughs> so you can uh, it's 
It's only like a one huge interconnected map. Uh, you can uh, look through here if you want to see what the uh, map might look like. Like uh, we never played any of these three maps. They do look interesting, but uh, this is the one that we're used to. Cause this is the default map, so we uh, know where everything is. When you're first playing, you're going to get uh, lost all the time. You're just going to be uh, running from zombies, and then you're going to be exhausted, and then you can barely jog, and then you can barely walk, and then that's it. The zombies get you. But eventually, you would uh, figure out the map, right? You could see the uh, trailer park is here. We could see there's another trailer park. We know the uh, rich homes are up here. We know that there's the lumber yard. We haven't actually gotten to the uh, lumber yard for a long time. Because uh, eventually, you might uh, work your way up this road and then work up here and then find out that there's actually nothing up there. Uh, so that's why we never went up there. You want to spend uh, most of your time inside the main town. Uh, so we're going to do that while drunk KY. And then uh, within the, each of these maps, there's like 10 different spot locations, right? So you could start out here, you could start here, you could start in the uh, rich houses up here, or in the uh, or northern part of the map. But uh, most of them start spawning around the uh, middle of the map. <clears throat> so we're going to do, it's, it's like the uh, default spawn location, and then we have the traits window. So the traits window, uh, we've pretty much tried most of the uh, traits here, right? All these traits, you don't actually uh, need them for anything. We figured that out uh, very recently, right? So we're always going here. We're like uh, athletic and strong. These are the uh, two most expensive traits. You want to get those things, right? Athletic uh, helps so much. It gives you 20% increased uh, movement speed, 30% uh, less endurance loss. And you can uh, fight for longer. I think it might increase your attack speed as well. Strength is good. Strong increases your uh, carrying capacity would be the uh, main thing that you notice, right? By default, your capacity is a uh, 12. With uh, stout here with plus two strength, it would go up to 15. And with uh, strong, you'd have 18. Plus you do more damage to uh, zombies, right? Seven the extra inventory space would be good and all this thing, but uh, these things, we were using them. They're not actually needed. And there's a huge reason for that. Because in order to get these, you're going to have to get some uh, negative traits. So going through here, pretty much uh, most of these are actually uh, so bad that it's not even worth getting any of them. Like uh, Smoker, High Thirst, Thin Skin, Slow Healer. So let's just go through here, right? If you go look at the uh, top traits, everyone says that the top traits would be Thin Skin, Slow Healer, High Thirst, and Smoker, right? Those are the uh, best ones. Best ones in the game, Thin Skin, High Thirst, Slow Healer, Smoker. They allow you to get uh, Athletic and Strong and give you uh, 12 points. So you could get like uh, Organized and Fast Learner. I think those are like some of the other top traits. I think people get like uh, Lucky. Uh, I know that uh, Dexterous is really good, right? So people might get that. You're a negative six. You have to get some other traits here that are uh, negative. So I don't know what would be other ones. I think like uh, Pacifist isn't too bad. We still have two points. And maybe a uh, Slow Reader, right? A slow reader, you're just going to speed through, and it doesn't matter if you're uh, reading books slower. So you might have a skill tree like this, right? <clears throat> Athletic, strong, organized, fast learner, lucky, dexterous. I think these are all the ones that are on the uh, top list. Fits good, high flutter, slow healer, pacifist, smoker, slow reader. This is what we were doing for a little bit. Like, uh, even at the beginning, we just had something uh, simple, right? We had uh, eight trade points. When you begin the game, you get eight trade points, so you can pick uh, anything out of here. I think we tried like uh, thick skin for a little bit. That one sounded good, and then we found uh, stout, and then we found out it increases our inventory space. So since we increased our inventory space, we never went back. Then we tried these ones, I think, uh, Dexterous. I think this was our, like, uh, starting, starting build for a little bit, right? We don't have to take, uh, any negative traits. And then we just get 
extra inventory space, plus we can uh, transfer items twice as quickly. That was a really good one. So let's just go back here again. Uh, we'll figure out the uh, trait here. We do have a really good one we figured out. I think you're going to uh, like it when you see it. So let's go here. Thin skin. We'll just put these back on again. And then we will be jumping into the uh, game here pretty soon. We're going to point out uh, why these traits might not actually be worth it, right? <clears throat> so we go here. Ask the er, organized. I think organized is all right. It's something unique. Uh, so if we go here. You can probably even, like, uh, find some more things to add and remove, right? I guess that'll work for now. <laughs> so, we were playing with, uh, Athletic and Strong for so long that we thought that it was pretty much, uh, mandatory to get these, right? If you don't have the increased, uh, movement speed and you're running out of red energy, the zombies are just gonna catch you and kill you every time. However, that's not actually how you're supposed to play. You're not actually supposed to be uh, running around everywhere, running away from the zombies, getting trapped and getting cornered and then getting eaten by them. You're supposed to actually fight the zombies. You're actually supposed to sit and fight them. <clears throat> so, athletic, it's not as good as you would uh, think it would, right? Because, uh,. You start with uh, 5 fitness, you start with 5 strength, this will bring it up to uh, 9, that's really good. And then uh, strength, the strong, the uh, inventory space. It is amazing having a uh, 18 carrying capacity and doing more damage and be able to knock down the uh, zombies a lot quicker. But actually, if you figure it out and you play long enough, the uh, 12 carrying capacity is actually not that bad. And you can sell kill uh, zombies pretty decently as well, as eventually you would be able to uh, trade these up yourself, right? Without uh, picking them at the beginning. If your character lives long enough, you can actually gain these traits in game. Which isn't entirely true, because I know the experience is so slow, it'll take you, like, uh, I bet. I bet it would take you over uh, 1,000 hours to get these. So if you pick these two, you're like uh, pretty much uh, warping your guy ahead 1,000 hours into the game. So these things trade super slowly. It would be amazing to get them at the beginning of the game. But if you uh, get rid of these and you learn how to play with just your uh, starting strength and fitness, you get rid of this thing, right? Thin skin. You're going to be able to live longer. So that's why we don't like this one. Because all this says is uh, you're going to get killed faster. And it doesn't say that any of these positive traits seem to be uh, worth the uh, trade-off to uh, get killed faster to do good at something else. Say with this thing, slow healer. Now, you may say if you just uh, play smart and you never get uh, scratched or anything... You won't have to worry about it. Same with uh, this thing, right? But uh, even if you uh, do play smart, even if you do play smart, zombies will attack you and you will get scratched. <laughs> so both of these uh, will be noticeable, actually. Because even when our guy, when we're just like uh, jumping a fence, when our guy jumps the fence, he like scrapes his shin and then he can barely walk. So if he can heal faster, that'd be good. And if he has a uh, less chance to scrape his uh, shin, I think it's also like the uh, code we were looking at. Like, uh, thin skin, when a zombie attacks you, by default, he has like a 25% chance to infect you. With a uh, thin skin, it jumps up to a 40% chance. With a uh, thick skin, it drops out to like a 12.5% chance. So it's uh, really good to get, uh, this one would be better, I would think. But you're not going to get all the uh, negatives to get it right. And uh, High Thirst and Smoker, these two, they may seem like good. But at the end of the day, all you're really doing with these things is the game's asking you. Uh, we have the default thirst rate. It's like, uh, this is the default amount of water you're going to need. Did you want to drink more water? Have to drink more water. Or drink uh, less water. Or do you just want to leave it as the uh, default? So that's usually what we're thinking, right? After going through all these things, we realize that these are just like uh, sliders to change your gameplay, right? 
Did you want to make uh, less noise when moving? Or did you want to make uh, more noise when moving, right? Clumsy, yeah. Do you want to make uh, more noise when moving? Or do you want to make uh, less noise when moving? Or you can choose the uh, default and then just be a uh, default. Do you want to be uh, less likely to be spotted by zombies? Or did you want to be more likely to be spotted by zombies? Or you can just leave it at default and then just ignore these. Because that's what we figured out. Even uh, these things, right? It's like, uh, did you want to be cut more easily? Or did you want to be cut uh, less easily? Or did you want to leave it at default? Because it uh, never seems to be a good thing to uh, take these to make more uh, negative traits. And then this uh, smoker one. <laughs> you're just going to find a bunch of cigarettes, but you're never going to find the matches or the lighter. Although we do find the matches of the lighter, we've been uh, finding them a lot more often, actually. All we do is just uh, run to the gas station, and then you find them. But if you never find them... Then this trait uh, pretty much uh, kills you. <clears throat> this trait it makes you so you can't even go to sleep. Then a uh, pacifist. I think a uh, pacifist with uh, fast learners like the uh, combo, right? Which just costs two points, and then you get thirty percent faster XP, and then you get a zero percent increased weapon XP. So I always thought a uh, pacifist was amazing. So all it is is you gain less weapon XP, but Actually, actually, we ended up uh, using our weapons a lot, so we uh, got rid of that one. Let's just look at our uh, final tree here, right? So after everything, I mean, we're let's look at the uh, the last uh, strength and athletic one, right? Because we went back to it, so like uh, maybe we need strength and athletic because they're so good, or at least uh, athletic or something. I guess they're like, uh, way back here. It's been a while since we used uh, Strength and Athletic. We used Athletic here, but then we had to get a Thin Skin, Slow Healer, Pacifist. These are like the only two that we want. So if you can uh, manage to play, learn to play without these two, that's uh, 20 points that you get back. And then let's just look at our final straights, right? So after playing for 235 hours, this is what we came up with. You don't have to take any of these negatives, right? You don't have to worry about uh, your skin being broken a lot easier. You don't have to worry about your wounds healing a lot slower. You don't have to worry about uh, drinking twice as much water. Because <laughs> everywhere that we read and everyone says that like, uh, water's not an issue. You can get enough water. But uh, my theory is if we have like... Uh, Let's say we have like a uh, 10 hour supply. Well, let's say we have like a one hour supply of water, right? If we have a one hour supply of water, we could uh, run around, do things for one hour. If we have like a 30 minutes, what? Well, I guess not 30 minutes, right? Because you're not even going to be awake for an hour. You're just going to be awake for like uh, 30, 30 minutes at a time. So if you have like a. Uh, 30 minutes worth of water we can run out and do stuff all day we don't have to worry about water but with the uh low high thirst thing we'd only have uh 15 minutes worth of water uh, don't say that we can just carry out uh, two water bottles that's even more uh, inventory space you have to worry about like if you're uh, lost in the woods or if you're going on a vacation let's say that you bring like uh five hours of water with you uh, five hours would only be worth like two and a half we're saying we could uh we could be away from water for twice as long, right? So we can make uh, longer trips. We don't have to keep searching for water all the time. Same with uh, this thing. So all we did was a uh, weak stomach, short sighted. These are like the only traits that uh, do not give you any negatives at all. They don't give you any negatives. Short sighted. You just wear glasses. That's it. And the only thing it affects is foraging. Or when you're uh, searching, when you use that search mode, which you barely use, it just decreases the radius by two. But if you wear glasses, it doesn't actually do anything, right? So if you go here, you go to the, your uh, character creation, you just click on uh, glasses, wear those, and then that nullifies the negative effect. So this uh, doesn't do anything. Then a uh, weak stomach. 
All you have to do is just uh, not eat rotten foods, don't eat uncooked foods. You're never going to do that anyways. So since you're never going to eat a rotten or uncooked food, you're never going to run into this. But that gives you an extra five points to actually uh, put some extra things on your tree, right? Without this, we just have eight points normally. Out of all these, these are the uh, only things that we can actually uh, consider, right? I mean, a slow reader, you can get that. You just speed up time to read books, but you get a 30% slower read speed, or you can get 30% uh, faster read speed, or you can just leave it at the default, default, uh, default rating. So that's what we do. I mean, you will be reading a lot of books once you uh, learn the game, actually. And then we got like uh, Organize. This one's amazing. It's the only reason we got it. Wakeful, same with that. That one's amazing. You could uh, stay out for 33% longer. Stay out and uh, loot things and kill zombies for 33% longer. Which we'll talk about when you get into the game. As soon as you get that uh, drowsy modifier, you're going to want to go to sleep. You're going to want to stop uh, fighting zombies. Because as soon as you get that uh, drowsy modifier, your damage is reduced by 50%. So you uh, cannot fight zombies whenever you're tired. And it allows you to do stay out for longer, right? You can stay out till like uh, 24 o'clock. And then you wake up at like uh, 4.30. It's amazing. Outdoors, man. Pretty much one of the uh, best traits of the game. That's it. Dexterous. We have an extra two points. It's between like a uh, Dexterous, Fast Reader, or Cat's Eyes. Or one of the other combos, right? Cause there's like, uh, there's like cop combos here you can do. For like uh, two points, you can get Fast Learner plus Pacifist. Pacifist reduces your melee weapon experience by 25%. Fast Learner increases your experience by 30%. So what this does is for two points, you get a 30% extra experience in everything, except for weapon skills. Weapon skills would be like a 0 0.975, so it's pretty much like uh, one times. So pretty much just uh, nullifies this pacifist's negative trait, and then it gives you plus 30% XP. But my theory is that uh, they give you the option to get 30% uh, more XP, or you can give 30% uh, less XP. Or we could just leave the XP at default. So we don't want to take any uh, negatives just to gain XP quicker. It doesn't make any sense. I think we'll leave it up to them to decide what that is. There's also this uh, other one, right? So this is uh, what we thought of too, right? Thick skinned for two points. If you just have two points left to spend, you just go thick skinned and then you go slow healer. And that just costs uh, two points, right? So thick skin, you're less likely to be scratched and get scratches and get uh, damage from a zombie. And then a slow healer, it just means that your wounds are going to heal slower. So if you're like, uh, if you're reducing your chance to get uh, scratched in the first place, you're not going to get scratched as much. So you're not going to be uh, healing as much. That was our theory. So that's like another uh, two point combo, so you can take like a negative eight trait and then a negative six trait, put them together, and then it just costs you uh, two points to get that thing right. So there's cool things like uh, that that you could do. I think another one was like uh, athletic plus four to fitness for ten points, and then you get uh, underweight negative one to fitness for six points. So if you get uh, these two, you get a uh, plus three to fitness for just uh, four points. That's it, right? Athletic plus uh, underweight, then you get three fitness and it just costs you four points instead of costing uh, 10 points. You do get underweight, but you can uh, fix that by eating a lot of food. There's other cool things here, right? But like we are saying, we don't figure out that we don't need any of that. If we can just uh, keep our tree simple, right? So we're like, uh, eight points here. If you we were to build it from scratch, I think we would just be like uh, short-sighted. That doesn't do anything. Weak stomach, that doesn't do anything. And then I think we have like uh, organized, the one of the best traits of the game, I think. Out of all of these other traits, <coughs> 
organized is one of the things that's amazing, right? You could get lucky, right? Lucky, it is amazing. We did play a game with this. And we found so many weapons. It increases your chance to find, like, uh, weapons and guns and ammunition and everything. There's, like, uh, so many houses had so many good uh, stockpiles of weapons and everything with this on. But it's going to cost you four points. Then you're going to have to get one of these uh, negatives, right? You can get, like, uh, passive assist. We lose 25% weapon XP, but we find more weapons. Uh, but you want to uh, level up weapon skills anyways, right? Organized. I think it's uh, wakeful. Outdoors man, and dexterous, they're just all the uh, two cost ones that are amazing. We still have one point, so we have uh, one extra point, which is why we get a uh, speed demon, right? Because it seems like in all of our builds for some reason, we always have uh, one extra point left over to spend. And then speed demon is the only thing to get for one point. So that's actually pretty decent. It increases your uh, gear switching speed by 200%. And you can uh, drive 15% faster in your vehicle. So maybe if you have one extra point, it's a good one to get. Don't ever go with uh, this one, right? Don't go with Sunday Driver. We used to go with Sunday Driver because you can get a uh, Sunday Driver. You drive very slowly. That doesn't matter because you're going to die before you get a vehicle. Which is uh, which makes sense. But once you get a good enough and then you figure out how to actually get a vehicle... This one does end up affecting you, right? So, for the beginning, maybe get a Sunday driver because you're never going to live long enough to drive a vehicle anyways. Then you can get a cat's eye, something that uh, would help you. But then once you uh, figure out the game and you get good enough, then you can actually uh, start driving uh, vehicles consistently in your games. Then you want to start getting Speed Demon. So, there we go. Super simple uh, trade tree. We don't need anything here. All these... Don't need them. Organize, wakeful, outdoorsman, extra speed demon, and all we have to take for the negative traits is just short sighted, weak stomach, right? No thin skin, no slow healer, no high thirst, no smoker, no pacifist, no slow reader. All those things are uh, too many negatives, right? So before we end the video, we'll end the video here pretty soon. I didn't think it'd be a 32 minute one, right? So just look at all the things that we're uh, not getting, right? All these things that are we used to get. All these things we used to get because they don't make sense to get them. Thin skin, we're gonna live longer. Perfect. Slow healer, we're gonna live longer. Perfect. High thirst, uh, we could go out for longer trips without having to uh, go back to the uh, lake all the time. So I think that was something we were thinking about too, right? If you have a high thirst, you're just going to have to go to the uh, lake twice as often, right? You could uh, go to the lake, pick up a five-hour supply of water. But if you uh, didn't have high thirst, it would be like a 10-hour uh, supply of water, essentially doubling it, right? High thirst, we go pick up a five-hour supply of water with high thirst. If we uh, didn't have high thirst, we could have a 10-hour uh, supply of water. So that's our theory. I'd rather uh, our water be uh, what we could uh, we don't have to carry as much, or water goes twice as far, right? Yeah, water goes twice as far. We don't have to go to the uh, lake. We have to go to the lake half as often if we take that out, right? Smoker, we don't have to search for smokes. We don't have to search for cigarettes. We don't have to worry about that. Pacifists, we could level up our weapon skills, right? Leveling up your weapon skills is pretty good, so. Get rid of that thing. Slow reader. We'll read books. Reading books is all right. The default speed's good. And then there we go. So, this is the ultimate skill tree, I would think. The ultimate one. There's uh, no better skill tree in the game. So, in the next video, we'll go through day one and then figure out how your day one should be. I didn't think this would be this long, but. It was just supposed to be about uh, what the power is going to cut off. The power is going to kill you randomly. So even in our uh, next video, we could be like, uh, here's the ultimate guide to the game. And then our uh, power is going to get cut off in like the uh, first three days. And then we're going to have to restart. So there we go. Part one.